So I, I did a mic a couple days ago. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, where at? Uh, at the comic strip. Okay. And, and uh, <laughs> so I'm in the lobby talking to some other guys, some other comics. And this guy walks in, and I see he's got a lit cigarette. <laughs> And I you think know, I, I'm the only one that has noticed so far. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. What was he wearing? He was like he was dressed. Like, he's a comic. He was up. He he's was like a young f- comic or like an old comic. He was in his 30s. What a prick! <laughs> no, it, get, it gets crazier. Okay, so he's got a lit cigarette and he goes, "Hey, are you guys here for the mic?" I go, "Yeah." The guy's not here yet, and he, so he sits down. And the one of the workers at the comic strip goes. Is that lit? <laughs> <laughs> you realize that's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, "Oh, what this?" <laughs> uh, you, oh yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, no, he's like, he like totally owning it. Yeah, he like no, he spaced it. He's like, oh, he didn't even think about it. He didn't even think about it, and he goes, "Yeah, you can't." The guy goes, "You can't smoke in here." So he like tries to put it out on his sh- shoe. No, no. <laughs> what do you think this is? Go outside. Yeah. Throw it yeah, away. Then sh- he goes. I, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it, put it out on his shoe. So he he goes outside. What? So he was smoking outside. He just sauntered in and forgot he, that he was. I guess so. He just didn't think about it. I guess so. Yeah. So he goes outside. Was he taking drags and like blowing it into the space? No, it was just lit. He just kind of holding. Ha- it. He was just yeah. hold- he held it in his fingers. <laughs> and he was like sitting at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and it took a little bit for people to notice. I noticed immediately because I saw him walk in, but it took a little bit for people to notice. Then you kind of start to smell it. Yeah. And he's like, and then they go, "Is that lit?" So he goes, he tries to put out a shoe. Then he goes outside. He comes back in, and uh, it's like kind of awkward, you know. And then so he goes up first at the mic, <laughs> okay. and he gets up and he goes, "Yeah, so I'm an anesthesiologist." He's an anesthesiologist. Yeah, that's his job, his actual okay. real job. Maybe I wonder if he forgets to put out his <laughs> cigarettes there when he goes in. Right, but doesn't that make you feel safe? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah. Guy's putting you under. He's walking in the fucking comic strip with a lit <laughs> cowboy killer every Monday night. <laughs> what a moron. Yeah, it's crazy. It's one of you, the craziest things I've seen in a long I've time. Smoked, I, I used to smoke for... 10 to 12 years and yeah. never once did I walk in somewhere with a lit cigarette. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been able to do and that. I'm not like a... <laughs> I space out a lot. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but never like that. No, it was wild. That's insane. No, you haven't been able to smoke. Did now, have you ever seen this guy, the performer, mm. who lights one on stage and he goes, up, 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 it's legal to light a cigarette on stage during a performance. I, well, I've never seen him say that. <laughs> but, but well, people always reference that. They yeah, go, sure. You're allowed to do uh, that. But I have seen uh, two comedians do that. One is Dave Chappelle. The other, Eddie, oh, yeah. e- Eddie Griffin. Well, yeah, like Chappelle can yeah. get away with. Yeah, well, I mean. It's like Keith Richards. He's just smoking cigarettes yeah. in the NPR yeah, studio. Yeah, I've never seen. <laughs> I've never seen just some guy. Just yeah, some, just some, some asshole yeah. smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. That's so wild. Yeah. Try to, he tries to put it out on a shoe. Yeah. What do you think this is? The 30s? <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, hold on. Let me put just. It out on his shoe. He couldn't do it. <laughs> and for what? For it to ash all over the floor of the comic strip? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I did a spot at the comic strip the other day. Yeah. Had a stinker of a set. You bombed. Oh, laid an egg up there. Really? Laid an egg. Wow. It wasn't actually. I mean, parts of it were fine. Yeah. They got some laughs, but yeah. parts of it were vacuously silent. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, there was like twelve people scattered around yeah. a sixty-person room. Yeah, yeah. You know, and two, there's two couples, and for every comic, they're staring blankly at them, like mm. <laughs> it's just like they ne- had no idea where they yeah, were, how they got yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So anyway, honestly, if you're gonna light a cigarette, walk in any comedy club in New York, the strip makes the most sense. That's true. Yeah, yeah. it is kind of stuck in the '80s. It is stuck in 1986. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm surprised the staff even realized that they needed to <laughs> tell them to put it out. <laughs> the staff is young. They were go, you can vape. <laughs> oh, you can vape in here. No problem. <laughs> Look, you can vape. You can do poppers, whippets, <laughs> snappets, coke, yeah, yeah. Molly, yeah, oxy, yeah, literally fentanyl. Anything. Yeah. yeah. Except cigarettes. You can't smoke cigarettes. You can't smoke cigarettes and stuff. No, you haven't been able to smoke indoors. And I mean, I was five when they banned that in Indiana. Yeah. Well, so get this, though. I read this article, and this gives me so much respect for this franchise, mm-hmm. more than I have ever had. The Packers 
just passed like an or- ordinance that. that is allowing people to smoke <laughs> cigs again yeah. in this in Lambo Stadium. Yeah. Just like in their seats. Yeah. The funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's crazy. That That's fucking crazy. rules. That fan base rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about people who were stuck in nineteen eighty six. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean we can't smoke in this in the seats anymore? <laughs> Except they're like, what do you mean we can't smoke in the seats anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's a better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, in Indiana, w- when they first enacted the no smoking oh, law, I bet it was all people in Indiana. Uh, oh, uproar! Giant yeah. uproar. Same with Missouri. But we had this restaurant called Don and Don. It's no longer there. Yeah, Don and Don was a staple of Franklin, Indiana. Yeah, it was built on cigarettes. Yeah, it was it really was built on <laughs> yeah. cigarettes, and they had a and they had a no smoking section. Which was kind of just a corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, not a smoking section, yeah. but a no smoking yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. So, but once they outlawed smoking indoors, they bought the owners bought a bus and parked it outside. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There was a place in Kansas City that did the same thing. Yeah. Even when restaurants and stuff had smoking sections before, like in the nineties and early two thousands, you go to an Applebee's with sure. your mom and dad. Yeah. Smoking, non smoking. It'd be like half the restaurant was smoking. There is no such thing as a section. It's smoke. No, smoke. There's closed windows. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not a single cracked window no, in Applebee's. It sort of wafts. Smoke <laughs> yeah. wafts. Yeah. 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 They put the smokers up a little bit, yeah. thinking that the smoke would go to the top of the room faster. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> it is wild. Yeah. Well, Joe. They should bring it back. <clears throat> I well, see, yeah, we should start smoking on the pod. Yeah, I'm down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you get some vapes, some vape action going. Would you like to explain what people are listening to? Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'll give us a little rundown. This is the Echo Chamber podcast with Joe and Trent. Um, the only podcast where two comedians read the Wall Street Journal because one of us gets it, it for, for free, free from, from work. work. Trent, now what are we going to be hearing about today? Well, Give us a little rundown. The this in our first story, there's a uh, billionaire dog fight oh, rocking no. uh, Park City, Utah. Uh, oh, okay. Who let the dogs out in Utah? Who let the dogs out? Now it's not the dog fight we're familiar with. It's oh. more of a legal. Battle. Oh, okay. Not a down well, and out. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, who let the dogs out in Utah? Who let the horses out in London? Whoa. We're going to hear about that. Animal that. heavy episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> King's horses run amok in London, and these are real horses. What? <laughs> well, <laughs> these are real wild. dogs, too, but it's not an actual <laughs> I see. ring. They love puns, yeah. these Wall Street sure, Journal Sure, folks. sure, sure. You're going to hear about that as well? Wow, that's very interesting. We'll also be hearing, you're familiar with Neuralink. Oh, of course. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it last night. <laughs> well, apparently the the first guy he had some issues. <laughs> oh, that's that's a shock. <laughs> you think you know something? Who would sign up to be like patient zero for any new technology? Who wants to be the rough draft of Neuralink? Ah, uh, yeah. Especially, yeah. Uh, I don't know. A man yeah. with nothing left to lose. Well. He's in a, he's handicapped. Well, Trent, this really would have made sense to uh, have after your dog one, because I realize I have a bit of a dog story my, of oh, my own. Well, we can reverse order. Bone bone of contention. Could courthouse dogs sway the jury? Courthouse dogs? There's dogs in the courtroom now. Wow. And they big time impact the jury. <laughs> oh, wow. We're going to read about that. Maybe that'll be my first story, and then we'll get to the, the horses running amok. Sure, sure. And in my final story... Uh, we'll chat. You, you, you're familiar with the pandemic? <laughs> uh, yeah, they, <laughs> well, they only talk about it in every article in the Wall Street <laughs> Journal. They just really can't well, move past it. Well, it was a boom for hand sanitizing It was. Businesses. Those pricks, yeah. Yeah. They got and, greedy, didn't they? Well, we'll check in on three three businesses that started <laughs> up during the hand sanitizer businesses that started up during the pandemic. So. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Maybe not bouncing out of the pandemic boom the way they thought. <laughs> Well, they may be stuck in the past trend, but Saudi Arabia is mm. all about the future, and ah. that is evidenced by their massive wall project. I don't know if you've heard about this. The wall project? Oh, they're going to build a 105-mile-long uh, skyscraper wall. It's city. not as easy as it, it <laughs> seems. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, spoiler alert, it is off to a rocky start. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, there's a bu- we'll get into it, but there's a bunch of things they want to build in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they're building a lot of them already, yeah. and this this thing is beyond insane. We got a graphic of it too. I mean, this is like 
truly they, they reference it in the story it is pyramids of giza level ambitious <laughs> wow <laughs> like uh, they don't know if they can pull it off wow well i'm rooting i'm rooting for the saudi arabians i want the wall <laughs> <laughs> Wait, somebody's got to build a fucking wall. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do it. Maybe the Arabians will. <laughs> well, Joe, I, I'll kick us off here. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh, okay. Headline, the billionaire dog fight rocking Park City, Utah. Oh, my goodness. A feud over a mansion turns into a brawl over dogs. Okay. Becoming the talk of ritzy town. Okay. Dateline, Park City, Utah. This famous ski town has experienced its share of fierce competitions, but it has never seen anything quite like the fight over Sasha and Mocha. <laughs> Aren't those uh, Obama's daughters? <laughs> <laughs> Are they Sasha and Mocha? <laughs> Are they, quote, vicious and aggressive, as billionaire Matthew Prince's lawyers allege, or lovable furballs, as their owners insist? And some wonder, is the hubbub really about the two pups, or is it a proxy battle over a mansion that has roiled the resort community? My God. Prince, co-founder and chief executive of tech firm Cloudflare, bullshit Bullshit name. Firm. Yeah, bullshit firm, bullshit name. <laughs> Sued neighbors Eric Herman and his wife Susan Fredston Herman, alleging... Pick a name. Fredston or Herman. <laughs> Do you love them or not? Yeah, what's with this bullshit hyphen shit now? Well, how bad do you need your mom's maiden name, whatever the fuck it is, your dad's name? <laughs> yeah, Fredston. Fredston. Got to cling on to Fredston. Send it out to pasture. I want to have a half and hyphen name. I hope she loses the lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, alleging their their Bern, Bern, Bernese mountain dogs, quote, have aggressively approached, chased, and harassed his family and guests while walking on the easement trail behind his property. The Hermans, mere millionaires themselves, denied the allegations in a brief describing Sasha and Mocha as well-behaved, polite, and non-aggressive. So who do you believe? <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the prosecutor saying that the dogs... Uh, they like they're, attacked them or what well, are they saying? They say, they're saying they're rabid beasts. <laughs> <laughs> what have they done? I mean, they're just <laughs> they ch apparently they chased and harassed them on the on the walking trail behind their mansion. <laughs> <laughs> what are they like French poodles or something? They're Bernese mountain dogs, sort now, of bigger dogs, larger yeah, dogs. Bernese mountain dogs. Sasha dog. and Mocha. And see, out there they're used to like toy miniature dogs. So yeah. if if like my mom, for example, saw like a normal big dog, she'd think it was like a bear. Yeah, and would be afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's used to it small yeah she's on she, designer yeah. dog she these people she can't wrap her head people have been larger. pampered by the lifestyle right. of the rich and famous in park city utah in park city utah ritzy town park city utah well that may not be the actual reason why he's so upset i see the, ulterior motives yeah the hermans claim prince filed the suit as retaliation after they appealed the city's preliminary approval in february of his plans to build a mansion overlooking this quaint town quote it feels like harassment herman said harassment Harassment. Prince, 49, said he sued the Hermans both out of frustration over their appeal, so he admits it, <laughs> <laughs> and what he described Starting as their the refusal as their what he described as their refusal to leash their dogs despite his requests. Quote, I get that we're rich assholes, he said. Really? But at some level, <laughs> I'm also a father and I have to protect my daughter. That I don't raise. Yeah. I'm, I'm never around for <laughs> that. My nanny looks after. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Uh, so here's what I'll say. I, I, you know, you know, you know, Joe. I love a good dog. I'm a dog guy. We're dog we're guys. Dog, on we're Echo dog Chamber. men. We have the same beliefs yeah. about everything, yeah. including dogs. <laughs> it's called Echo Chamber. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cats, they make me sneeze. They're cunty. No, I they, like. They don't cat. love you. Uh, I would like them more if I could touch them without sure, sneezing. Sure, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, but when I go out. In New York, the city streets, and I see people with walking their dog, no leash. Boy, does it chap my hide. I'm honestly impressed when I see it if they're obedient. I'm like, man, you really sure, did a good job sure. with that dog. Yeah. But if they're running around crazy, then they it's like, what around. are you doing? Yeah, but also, if they're even if they're obedient... It yeah, still chaps your hide, huh? It still chaps my hide. Because then I also... Now, when I, when, I had, when I moved out here, I was with a lady... Who had a dog. I'm well aware. And uh, I used to walk the dog. I used to have to walk the dog before I went to work in the morning. Pain in the ass. Pain, yeah. Kind of a pain in the ass, but I, I love the dog, you know. So you did what you had to do. I, I did what I had to do. 
And so, but I, uh, but I also, now this is something you don't really, maybe Park City, Utah, some other places, uh, you have your own yard, you let the dog out. You don't really have to walk the dog. But in New York, you have to walk the dog. Yeah. And other people would let their dog run up to the dog. Oh, that drives me crazy, too. Yeah. Because you don't know. You and don't then know it's how like, the it's fucking with other, it. It's yeah. mounting it. You know? Yeah. And they're just they're just waiting. I hate it when they just wait. They like, don't oh, say a single to, fucking it's word. Like, dude, can you get your dog off my dog? Yeah, it's it's. I said that one time to a guy. Yeah, I go, can you get your fucking dog away from my dog? <laughs> sometimes I get very angry, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just flies out. I know. Sometimes you, you snap. Yeah, I snap. Uh, the Herman said he never asked them to leash their dogs before filing the suit. And quote, to the best of our knowledge, the dogs have had no interaction with the princes. Prince's suit. Now, is there CCTV we can look at to find, <laughs> to find the truth? I don't know if there's a cam trail. Perhaps. <laughs> you think they might these, have one in you, Park City, Utah? You would think so, yeah. Uh, the prince's suit also characterizes the Hermans as, quote, elderly and frail and unable to control the dogs. Uh, the Hermans bristle at that. Quote, help me, I'm frail, a fit-looking 68-year-old Susan Fredston Herman joked on a recent day holding up her hand in jest after snuggling with the dogs on her deck. Her 71-year-old husband is an emerging markets financier and biotech CEO. I don't know why we needed to know that. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> the prince has designed an L-shaped dream home. L-shaped dream home? Yeah. Which... Uh, according to a tw- January 2024 20, 20, planning commission report, would measure a 11,300 square feet and have a large parking area accessed by a tunnel. Who's this fucking guy, Batman? <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> also, what does that matter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think and they think it's going to be an eyesore, a giant eyesore. Oh, it's a huge right. mansion. And he's going to fucking right. dig into the... And he's going he's like a tunnel. He's gonna rip through the sewing yeah. the sewers and everything. Yeah. yeah. So what's the tunnel? Despite their continuing to speak both sides this is kind of like out of a out of a eighties movie, like a okay. comedy. Despite their continuing dispute, both sides converged recently at the Park City Follies, an annual musical fundraiser where performers satirized the rich and powerful, including Prince who sat with his fan, his wife in the packed audience. In one giant photo of the, of the two dogs on stage, a caption has Sasha saying to Mocha, quote, the house doesn't comply with the historic district guidelines, to which Mocha replies, let's go shit on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the community has decided that this guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> He's an asshole. Well, Prince joined the audience's laughter, yelling, woo, after... Another biting joke. Afterward, they ran into the Hermans, who were mingling on the street outside with Sasha and Mocha. Tatiana Prince, his wife, blew a kiss toward the dogs. Wow. The kiss of death. <laughs> the kiss of death, yeah. So, Whoa. Sounds what, like going to shake out. Days are numbered. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. The whole town's against them. They're, they're <laughs> big fucking eyesore of a Batman mansion. Yeah. Their dog shitting everywhere and <laughs> ravaging the town. <laughs> yeah, wow. But doesn't yep. that sound like a fucking like it's like a cartoon of a rich town? They, it's they a cartoon have a, of a they, rich town. It's also a story that doesn't matter. Yeah, no, and yeah. and they love to just tell us in the Wall Street Journal maybe once every day about some small rich community mm. being you know uh, upended by yeah. by something like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> or a yeah. house yeah, yeah. or a, a large mansion yeah yeah, or, or something like that yeah, yeah. a rich guy <laughs> yeah and then yeah. we read it and we go oh, okay. <laughs> there we go okay kind of interesting but here's something that's happening all yeah. around the world trent speaking of dogs bone of contention mm. could courthouse dogs sway the jury this sure. is the wall street journal more pooches work the just in the justice system bringing hugs wags and some controversy mm. Uh, Comment, a three-year-old black lab wears a vest and bow tie to court. Wow. More than John Fetterman. (laughs) (laughs) Guy's goddamn dog. Yeah, yeah. If the dog can do it, I think Fetterman can put on a fucking uh, uh, suit. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) You'd think he'd be on a leash. Um, 
and settles into the witness box before trial starts. Jurors, who could be biased by the dog's presence, are none the wiser. Unless Comet snuggled at the testifying witness' feet, nods off. Quote, the dog snores and it can be really stressful for us, says Jennifer Barbantini, who works with crime victims at the Ventura County District Attorney's Office. Hmm. The, witness is, the witness typically nudges Comet awake before anyone notices. The pack is growing. More than 320 courthouse dogs are working across the U.S., more than triple than that of a decade ago. So these are like emotional support dogs for to calm wit- down the witness. The witness. It's for people who have to testify who are rattled by the fact that they have to testify. Yeah, people Sometimes that- they're young or whatever they sure. they want a, a dog yeah they're most mainly young <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well not just young people yeah. but courthouse dogs such as comet typically working with prosecutors or victim advocates uh often are used to comfort witnesses testifying in court or people particularly alleged crime victims during law enforcement interviews mm. quote you get someone who doesn't want to talk is street hardened and wants no part of being in the building yeah says brian bendish a prosecutor in westchester county um, and a dog signals to a jury that an alleged victim is sympathetic, needy, or vulnerable, says lawyer Jan Trazen of Washington. Sure. Uh, a public defender organization. Quote, the accused person doesn't get to sit there with props. Yeah. I love dogs, ad, adds Trazen. We all love dogs. Whose own mutt bear was trained at a juvenile detention center. Mm. I don't know what that means. Quote, I just don't think they should belong in courtrooms. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. How about a stuffed animal? A stuffed animal you think is better. And if it's an adult, maybe perhaps a fidget device of some kind. A, a fidget Rubik's sp- cube. Oh, a Rubik's cube. Or a spinner. A fidget spinner. Well, I <clears throat> may perhaps. Uh, also- Stress ball. Sure, or or also they could grow up. <laughs> they could grow up and do what they they've hey, got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you were a victim of a mugging. But where were you, January nineteenth? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Is there perhaps a dog here that I could hold <laughs> while I answer this? Well, that's crazy. Why would they need dogs? <laughs> no, it's I nuts. agree. Also, I agree with the, the 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 lady who says it could make them more sympathetic. You yeah, because person- they see the person holding. Uh, I. I was in that night. Yeah. I didn't notice anything unusual. Right. Holding yeah. the dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's See, when you, when you first uh, read the headline of this story, I thought it was like the like Air Bud. <laughs> like they're working in the courtroom? No. Yeah. Well, that that would be fun. That would that be, would fun, be to fun to imagine. Yeah. But I, uh, maybe I'm confusing movies, but there's a movie where they fight over, they have fight over legal custody. Okay. And uh, it's like a mom and a, they get divorced or something. Or yeah. They break up. And the, the perhaps they, Marley and me, perhaps Marley and me, were, yeah. But they put <laughs> the dog Shiloh. in the middle of the of the mom and the dad, yeah. And they they go well, the dog, it's the dog's decision. <laughs> the, dog, <laughs> the dog gets to choose. So you thought it was kind of like that, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was hoping it was. Like, I don't, Your Honor, I don't think the dog is capable of making this decision. <laughs> right whoever now. he goes to first has the treats. Whoever he goes to first gets it, gets it for life. Yeah. <laughs> we could do as Solomon did and simply have the dog. <laughs> <laughs> how do pooches get summoned for courthouse duty experts look for dogs typically black labs golden retrievers or a cross that are emotionally stable and social even with people they don't know yeah um says flora baird of calif canine companions a nonprofit that breeds trains and places service dogs into the justice system bullshit um <laughs> job um some regions are more court dog friendly than others mm. so quote out west it's much more acceptable Along oh, the East shocker. Coast, shocker. they see it as undignified. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to get a fucking court downtown Manhattan DAs. When Trump's on trial with Stormy Daniels, <laughs> she's not getting a dog up there. No, nah, she's not the getting a goddamn dog. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but in soft California, yeah. dogs galore. Sure. Makes sense. Kids are among, do- among the dog's biggest fans. Victim advocate Shannon McFate of the Denver District Attorney's Office asked children their favorite color before choosing neckwear for her office's dog, mm. Bodie, from his 50-piece bow tie collection. Jesus. I can't believe they have to put these fucking dogs in bow ties. It's humiliating. Well, they're Make in court. Go- they got to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to give these dogs jobs, you know? <laughs> um, dogs, dog rules vary. I don't know if you do that. In Arkansas, the law requires... Dog rules vary, but all dogs go to heaven. (laughs) That's true. Dog day afternoon. In Arkansas, the law requires dogs to remain out of jurors' sight. 
the, ah, the so stakes might... are high. If the canine pops its head out from the witness box, a judge could declare a mistrial. Wow. He goes, and the whole thing's the whole wow. thing's com- compromised. Whoa, he whoa, whoa. goes free. Wow. <laughs> so you, if you're if you're uh, on trial. You should bring some treats, shuffle them around. No, it's a mistrial. Like, if you're on trial, do you just get off scot free, or is it like they have to redo the it's a mistrial? <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? One never knows. Yeah, and, one never uh, knows. I think, I don't know. But then, delay, and then, of course, there's double jeopardy. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Quote, we tell our clients, wear slip-on shoes so you can use your feet to pet the dog. Uh. That way the dog stays down there. Yeah. What If they don't want it out of sight and they want something to soothe people, why don't they have a lady down there <laughs> sucking everybody's cocks? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the dog's moving yeah, around too much. a lady much. or a guy going or down. Or a guy, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can say, which instead of asking their favorite color, they go, what do you like, a guy sucking your cock or a lady? Yeah. And then you tell them and then they... <laughs> Yeah, that's just my idea. But <laughs> that's not bad. Objections by defense lawyers have led to a body of uh, appellate law around the country giving new meaning to the saying "a dog of a case." Mm. Courts have largely ruled in favor <laughs> of canines. Popular, popular saying. Yeah, I'm like, I've never <laughs> a dog of a case. <laughs> <laughs> I've never. <laughs> we these all, people we're are all idiots. walking around <laughs> saying we're that. We're saying that. <laughs> I can't. I can't stop saying that. It's my favorite saying. <laughs> When Pennsylvania's highest court ruled in 2021 that trial judges have the dis- discretion to allow witnesses to testify with dogs, the court noted one judge had taken several precautionary steps to prepare for the possibility that excited tail wagging by a dog named Melody would make noise in the witness box. Mm. So it adds a bunch of like things yeah, these people have to listen, think about. Listen, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Keep the dogs out of the court. We've courthouse. lost our mind with the dogs. <laughs> We're out of control. Oh, it's, it's nuts. We don't need to put them in bow ties it, and put them in a murder trial. We, it's like, you know how they said gay marriage... What's next? You can get mar- marry your dog? Turns out they were right. Well, no, I don't know if they were that far. <laughs> but that's like the... the 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 uh the, it's a slippery slope with like when we started letting dogs now people take their dog to the restaurant yeah it's, no no you don't need yeah that. and you Leave never the used, dog home the you dog never used, used to be able to fly with a dog no, yeah. and you, in the past you had to strap its fucking crate on the top of your your jeep <laughs> yeah. and drive across like the country. Mitt Romney yeah if, yeah exactly if yeah. you want to go on a vacation with the dog right okay you're gonna drive to the lake with the dog on top of the car yeah <laughs> well maybe so maybe it's in the car. <laughs> But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now, yeah. now you got all these ladies with with uh, fake blonde hair and fake right. tits and their little toy dogs sticking out their heads out of their purses. Yeah. And they go, my dog's got paperwork. Right. Let me, let me in. Let me through. Yeah. But that's why all these dogs have anxiety now and allergies. You never heard about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and medical condition. They yeah. got CTE. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, the, also the dog probably wants a break. Every now and then. Doesn't he want to be in the to, courthouse, for no, sure. No, he likes Doesn't to be home. Doesn't like bow ties. We all need a little break from people now and again. Uh, well, Joe, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh. Headline. Neuralink implant had gap in connection. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? I was so confident something like this would happen with this guy. Oh, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's entirely predictable. So he's screwed, huh? Or what? Well, he's not screwed, They, but we'll get into it. Neuralink encountered a problem with the implant in its first human patient, Noland Arbaugh, that <laughs> reduced the amount of data it could capture from his brain, according to a blog it's only, post. It's only got two gigs. <laughs> not enough gigs. Well, he's got to pay 99 cents more a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're out of data that for the month, yeah. so if you want to have any thoughts, <laughs> to tell your arms what to do. You have to wait till next month. They're up your subscription. <laughs> you're our bitch now. <laughs> Unless you want the platinum yeah. model. So that's according to a blog post the company published Wednesday. Some data was lost because a number of the implant's threads that had been placed in Arbaugh's brain came out. <laughs> God. That can't be good. <laughs> The company owned by Elon Musk uh, didn't disclose the reason why some threads retracted unexpectedly. When why would they? It's not important. Well, it's ne- probably because they're all on drugs over there. <laughs> <laughs> Neuralink posted about the problem on its blog after the Wall Street Journal inquired about the issue. So the the, the Wall Street Journal uh, they asked. And they then, asked, and they, they go, go, "You know what? Well, you'll have to read our blog." <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. Wall Street Journal's been out to get these guys. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really out to get yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> One factor that Neuralink explored that may have contributed to the threads coming out is that air was trapped inside Arbaugh's skull after surgery, a condition called pneumocephal- pneumocephalus, according to people familiar with the events. The problem hasn't appeared to pose a risk to the safety of Arbaugh, a quadriplegic, since a 2016 diving accident. Even so, the possibility of removing Arbaugh's implant, a so-called expl- uh, explantation, was floated said these people. So they're considering taking the whole fucking thing out. <laughs> I would. Yeah. Yeah. How bad would that suck, though? So you're finally moving again. Right. And then it goes haywire and they Well, he's out. not moving. What was he doing with it? He can, like... <laughs> That's actually funny. We'll get into that in a second. <laughs> but he, he's still uh, paralyzed. Okay. So uh, even with the Neuralink, he wasn't unparalyzed. No. Uh, even with the implant's degraded capabilities... Uh, Neuralink was able to pull off a live demonstration of Arbaugh playing chess. <laughs> they go, don't fuck this up. <laughs> a leap in the capabilities for a brain-computer interface technology. This past Saturday night, Arbaugh also live-streamed himself on X, formerly Twitter, using the implant to navigate around his computer screen and play games. So basically, he can't do anything except play play games. <laughs> Also, <laughs> that's so funny. He can play chess and he can play Mario Kart. He can Kart. play chess, Tetris, Pong, yeah. perhaps uh, Solitaire. Yeah. <laughs> he can only drag and drop things. Yeah. That sucks. Also, hear me out. Yeah. How do we know that he's doing this and it's not a screen recording of, of, of something else? I wouldn't put it past him. No, no what's he going to do? Say that's not me? <laughs> With what jaw? Yeah, he's trying to communicate with his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he's looking at the but reporter. Basically, mm. it, it, what, this is like the same thing that Stephen Hawking, he yeah. already did this. He created this. Did he? I mean, he could move the computer mouse with his he eyes. He like binary, shit. like one, two, one, one, two, two, two. Come on, one, one. Two, I believe two. it was. <laughs> one, I think it binary is ones and zeros. There's no twos in the <laughs> Well, that's what he added. He added, oh, yeah. he added the, the two. <laughs> sure. So he could click the mouse. <laughs> well, uh, Neural, t- Neuralink has set a goal to implant 10 people this year with its device. Maybe they should get the first one right they before, they, <laughs> before they start doing a whole yeah, add another communities nine. of people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they do a whole dormitory. Right. Our boss implantation was on... January 28th, and then the weeks after, he was able to play the fast-paced raising video game Mario Kart. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad to hear that he's played all of his favorite games. Just by he was able to play Mario Kart just by thinking, according to a video recording Neuralink played later. So they could have just faked that too. Oh yeah. Now tell me this: Can he like write? Or can he only play games? Or is he he can write, but he's not interested? <laughs> yeah, no. He'd rather play games. <laughs> he's really, I mean, he's really. He's kind of like an everyman. Yeah. yeah. I. He goes. They go. You can write too. He, he goes, goes. I'm not interested. Then you, just, you, know, you want to write? They have the word browser open, and then <laughs> and then you just see the Mario Kart browser <laughs> go up, and he's just, yeah. <laughs> I sure I know I can write, but I would much rather play as Yoshi. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't blame him. If I couldn't do anything, I'd be like, "This is my only release. What do yeah. I want? What do I want to pontificate yeah, on my experience in right. Microsoft Word? No, I don't no, so. I want to not think about it at all. Sit in my chair, and, and there's no better escape than Mario Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That guy's just playing games. That rules. Hopefully, they can like unfuck it up so he can ple- keep gaming. Yeah. Dude, that king has got a game. <laughs> he's got a game. He's yeah. He's got a game. He's a, he's a wheelchair king. He's got a good <laughs> game. <clears throat> well, the Neuralink may be fucking up, but you know what? The mm. new technology is going down all the time, but it uh, turns out old old technology is something we shouldn't be doing anymore either. Oh, really? <laughs> that being horses. Trying to ride horses. Horses. I'm going to say it. We should give it up. We don't know you- how to do it anymore. We've lost our touch. This is the age of cars. Really? This is from the Wall Street We've Journal. We've lost the touch <clears throat> to ride a horse. King's horses run amok in London. Uh, Dateline oh, in London. Oh, I think I've heard about Did this. Did you hear about this? Yeah. Several of the King's horses, this is King, um, I believe, Charles, 
the king's horses and a few of his men sparked chaos on the capital streets Wednesday when members of it's of household Dumpty. of cavalry lost their mounds, allowing the animals to gallop through rush hour traffic, careening into cabs <laughs> and double decker buses while while being pursued by police over several miles. <laughs> <laughs> the upset started earlier in the morning with preparations for troop trooping the color, an annual military parade to mark King Charles the third, his official birthday in June. Hmm. Um, fun fact: his official birthday as the king is not his actual birthday. The oh, household, sure. the cavalry mounted regiment, <laughs> an elite military unit. Yeah, yeah, right. Whose well-drilled <laughs> horses <clears throat> take part in numerous regal events, including coronations, set out of its Hyde Park barracks for what is called "quote watering order," where horses trot through London to exercise. All these bullshit names and rituals they do. It's not even his fucking birthday party, right? Let all Trooping the go. court is that what it is uh, called? Yeah, it sounds like know. the name of a horse. Wa- in the, in watering the order, Kentucky for, Derby. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we are begin the trooping the court and watering order <laughs> what are we saying oh, the grand jubilee and the horses flying off guys are <laughs> falling onto the ground <laughs> <laughs> then according to an army spokesman things went wrong oh, a crashing noise caused by a building materials falling off a building into the street startled five of the horses four riders were thrown oh, off their mouths they got bucked they got bucked by a startling noise wow. whoa, whoa there Whoa! Well, it's a building collapse. Something fell. Off something a building. fell off a building. Well, that's also with something we can't do anymore. Build a building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> we can't do that anymore. Either. So everything's kind of falling apart. Yeah. It's kind of a domino effect yeah, of society. Really, yeah. Society kind of unraveling yeah. in front of our eyes. Four riders are thrown off their mounts at eight uh, forty a.m. The horses were off. Uh, you'd think it was a race. One horse collided with a sightseeing bus. Another was reported to have smashed into a Mercedes van. Wow. A white horse covered in blood was filmed Jeez. galloping in the city's west end. Wow. Another was spotted at Victoria Station. E-bikes were knocked over in Belgrade Good. Square. Yeah, yeah. Cyclists on their way to work were filmed looking on in horror at ho- as horses yeah, charged good. by. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Let them run fucking let buck them, wild. Let them run wild. Yeah. <laughs> Teach us a lesson. <laughs> About an hour after the stampede began, the horses were rounded up. Two of the five horses suffered injuries that are being assessed, said the Army. Three riders suffered injury injuries, but none were life-threatening. Hmm. Paramedics said four people were taken to a hospital. The ceremony of trooping the color is believed to <laughs> have been first performed during the region of King Charles II, who was monarch from 1660 to 1685. A better time for this ceremony. <laughs> sure when they had nothing else going Made on they sense. didn't have to deal with double decker buses now do you think the horses were doing that because they had the th- blinders on they couldn't see where they were going you would think a horse would know how to avoid a double decker bus maybe do they have blinders on is that a thing well they do in uh, horse racing horse i would assume racing. i would assume that's not to see the other horses next to them yeah but i would assume i, I mean i think uh in like uh Whatever they call the the thing in Central Park, where you ride around on a horse, I think they have blinders. I don't know on. if they had blinders on. It does yeah. say here that they had bow ties on. They were actually in court earlier that morning, so they kind of had a long day <laughs> between the sure, parade and, and the court cases. Yeah. They kind of had a long day. <laughs> um, so yeah, wow. So horses are running wild in London. I say. We don't know. I, I went to a St. Patrick's Day parade one time in Kansas uh-huh. City, and there was like a cop on a horse. Yeah. Clearly had did not know how to ride the horse. Yeah. I mean, the horse was like going wild. He was trying. He was like, whoa, whoa. And it kind of like took off. Right. And he just like ran off with it. Well, yeah. Because no. we don't ride them every day. We ride them once a year. You don't know. You don't have a chemistry with the horse. Exactly. You're riding it once a year. Exactly. We used exactly. to ride a horse every day. It was like our car. Yeah. They, yeah. You, you, and yeah. our best friend. <laughs> Our best friend. Take it down to the bar, get hammered car. with it, drive, ride home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, the only people that ride horses now are cowboys. It, well, I don't know how many of those there still are, but yeah, not, a couple. Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, and speaking of dwindling numbers, oh. uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal, Joe. Uh, this is actually from the small business section. Oh, the small business the small section. The small business section of the Wall Street Journal, which is in there every once in a while. The mom and pop. The mom and pop. Small business section. <laughs> we'll come up with a better name. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that that's what their section. Uh, I didn't name the section. Uh, no, I know, but sometimes oh. we have our names. For sure, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, headline: They started hand sanitizer businesses during COVID. Hmm. Consumers couldn't get enough of the products. 
how are these startups doing now? Well, I hope they're all going we, under. We check in on a few <laughs> hand sanitizer <laughs> startups. It's not going well, huh? Yeah, Have know. they switched to grain alcohol? <laughs> well, during the pandemic, hand sanitizers became everyone's frontline defense, and countless startups launched to meet the overwhelming demand. Then the demand wasn't so overwhelming anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, it sucked. I hated using it three times. Well, hand a day. sanitizer is for chicks anyway. It's for chicks. Yeah. It's like oat milk and <laughs> what else? We've got a list going. <laughs> we got a list. Oat milk and hand sanitizer. Top it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, according to the research company Statista, the global hand sanitizer market boomed by five hundred percent in twenty twenty to six. Well, they can't expect that to last. No, but the thing is, people can't. They have no foresight into the future. I know. And if any business goes up at all, yeah, they have to the keep plan rising. is always to just yeah. keep going up. There's never the, a realistic never person at the top who goes, this is going to bounce down, right. and that's okay. Right. We'll just try to make as much profits as we can right now. Exactly. We go, no, we're going to hire a million people and build a new grand suite <laughs> office because hand sanitizer is the future. Right. It's exactly. Not. It's people and fucking they're all I insane. know. They should just be satisfied. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> in, uh, well, so it went up to $6.3 billion in revenue from $1.3 billion in 2019. Yeah. But as the pandemic subsided, so did sales. Yeah. $3.5 billion in 2021 and hovering around $3 billion for the next couple of years. It's still up significantly. It's still up two, two, two billion. They can't be happy with that. They're never satisfied. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's doubled since 2019. <laughs> right. Well, these people got into the these people got in late in the game. Now I'm sure uh, 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 I can't think of a hand sanitizer uh, company right now. Purell, Purell. That's what I was trying to think of. I'm sure they're fine. They're satisfied. But they're these fine, people, yeah. these people got into late in the game. They got in during the pandemic. Purell made a deal with the uh, the, the federal government yeah. to put a little bit in our water supply. So right. they, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what happened to all those startups? We're going to take a look at a couple of them. So these are startups that go, oh, this is red hot right now. We yeah. want to get they're in. They're kind of. When you think about they're it, bottom they're, feeders. Well, they're bottom feeders and they're evil. Yeah. Because it's something that everybody was looking for and they right. go let's get away ah they're like mr burns we'll yeah, cash yeah, yeah. we'll cash in we'll mix petroleum jelly yeah. with with vodka right amy wiseman was inspired to rework sanitizer before the pandemic hit when she became a new mom in 2019 wiseman who previously handled an array of jobs for women's intimate brands nix found the sanitizers on the market harsh and off-putting, and she didn't want it on her hands when she changed her baby. I remember during the pandemic when the hand sanitizer shortages and there was like other bullshit brands coming out. Yeah. And some of them were like smelled so bad. It was like pure tequila. It yeah. was like bad bottom shelf tequila, like reeked. Yeah. Just like disgusting, goopy alcohol. Yeah, oh, it stinks. Yeah, it was awful. No, I refuse. I refuse uh, to use hand sanitizer. I also don't believe that it does anything that's helps you no it's bad if your hands are dirty it's just moving dirt around on your hands right burning off the good bacteria yeah her idea sanitizer with a better scent hmm. there's a novel concept <laughs> and uh ingredients that nourished the skin sold in more environmentally friendly packages mm. by the time she launched her startup palm in 2021 the, the pandemic was at its height quote i was planning to make Utilitarian hand sanitizer, a luxurious beauty product. Something totally new, she says. As I was developing the product, the pandemic hit and the sanitizer category changed overnight. With the demand for sanitizer soaring, she decided to reach out to a wider base of customers, more than just new moms. <laughs> she went to she switched her model to offering dog shit to the masses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she actually had the right idea. She was yeah. marketing it towards chicks. Yeah. She, she gets got, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the, the customers. And for then for two years, they got everybody. Yeah, that, that's over with. Yeah, the company garnered some attention in the media and it attracted a loyal following. Wiseman uh, says, but overall, marketing to a broad market was tough in the early days. She says, there was a backlash in the hand sanitizer industry, <laughs> where people would say, "I never want to see it again." I agree. Yeah, I'm I, with I will never use it again. No, not in a fucking million years. <laughs> you put a gun to my head. <laughs> So Wiseman decided to focus her efforts on the group that originally inspired Palm, New Moms. 
they quote care about hand hygiene and minimizing the spread of germs in their families. I don't. Well, you're not a new mom. Yeah, but I don't give a shit about no, it. No, I don't. Couldn't give a fuck about hand <laughs> hygiene. Kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> the strategy worked. Palm's revenue grew forty percent in twenty twenty two, as the company expanded beyond sanitizer into the hand care category. So she kind of, it's it's working for her. She's folk, but she's, she she she's she, she, she moved she the market. She you, pivoted. You gotta, you gotta pivot. pivot. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pivot Charles well this is another guy Charles Robinson was a philosophy philosophy student at University College London and not enjoying it he says <laughs> bullshit major <laughs> when the pandemic hit the situation led him down an improbable new path the sanitizer business <laughs> Okay, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Quote, it was primarily born out of the personal necessity to do something meaningful with my life in the first lockdown. Bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. Andrew. It's a it's a cash grab. It's a cash grab. You're Me- not doing meaningful, anything meaningful, meaningful by charging people. I'm hand, saving to the buy world. Hand sanitizer. Yeah. yeah. It's like bullshit. mixing grain alcohol with... But if that's what he's got to d- say to trick Vaseline. himself into th- feeling important, good for him. Uh, yeah, whatever helps you sleep in yeah. that, Mr. Philosophy. Pig, pig asshole. <laughs> <laughs> quote there wasn't a business probably a nice guy <laughs> no i don't think so. quote there wasn't a business plan or any market research nor am i passionate about hand sanitizer okay what is he passionate about i just love the idea of doing something better both for myself and people who needed help oh give me a break his if he was passionate about that he would just give it out for free what is media agent tell the wall street <laughs> journal his I, here's his brilliant idea his idea was inspired by products like scented cards designed to freshen up vehicles. He started asking himself, quote, could you put hand sanitizer in a card like this? Who would buy them? What? Could you custom brand them? This is all about money, then. It has nothing yeah, to do with helping exactly. anybody. No. If you really wanted to help people, you make something as cheap and healthy and right. accessible. Robinson launched Joel Card in April 2020 using this part is- of his student loan to get the company rolling. He says the cards, which people can snap in half to release sanitizer, were profitable right away. Sounds like they're ruining the environment. Yeah, it's wasteful. <laughs> it's it's crazy. crazy bullshit. It's wasteful. insanely wasteful. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> You're going to need an improvement. The bottle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the five gallon vat yeah. of it uh, was uh, the only ergonomic <laughs> part yeah. of it. No, you know what? We need something you can snap no, in half. No, 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 New unique piece of trash. Right. Every time they use <laughs> the forty s- times a day, you use it. I want to snap, snap a, it a half, thing, rub it on my hands, and throw, throw it on the fucking throw that ground. on the ground, <laughs> make sure that it gets into the ocean. <laughs> that the card snapped in half looks like it would get caught right in the gills of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> and it has toxic hand sanitizer. I would say this guy is one hundred percent made the world more dangerous and, and, <laughs> and worse, and accelerated uh, the end of the world. Uh, he's, he's he's human scum. <laughs> <laughs> But as the pandemic wound down, he faced a more serious challenge. His market was drying up. Good. Who could have predicted? 2022 was tough in Europe. Look around any public place. The social architecture is virtually identical to 2019 with no face mask, no hand sanitizer stations, no social distancing, he says. (laughs) Fuck off. He goes, it's bullcrap. It's bullcrap. I thought thought this was the new normal. Yeah, come on, guys. Mask up. <laughs> so distance. Lock ourselves in, inside. Yeah, forever. <laughs> what and a buy pig. my fucking gel card. What a fucking asshole. He's pig. not making the world a better place. Nah, he stinks. He stinks on ice. That guy sucks. God, I hope his business goes under and he gets like hit with some sort of class action lawsuit <laughs> that drives him to his knees and then really turns it back to philosophy. <laughs> well... You know who might need a little philosophy themselves? Ooh. Maybe a new a business uh, <laughs> business manager themselves, oh. along with all these hand sanitizers. Sure. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It's our final story on the Echo Chamber podcast today. And this is, to me at least, a fascinating one. Huge project hits wall, quote unquote, mm. in Saudi Arabia. The crown prince's plan for a 105-mile-long skyscraper faces glitches and soaring costs. <laughs> The engineers saw a mountain-sized problem. For weeks, thousands of trucks and diggers had worked 24 hours every day scooping millions of cubic feet of sand at the world's biggest construction project known as Niam in Saudi Arabia. But the workers had dumped the massive pile of dirt, now hundreds of feet wide, 
in the very spot where architects plan to dig a waterway to the Red Sea. Uh oh. <laughs> There's a lot of whoopsies in this one. <laughs> so the trucks and diggers went back to work, picking it all up and making a new mountain of sand nearby in a costly hiccup they epi- that epitomizes the Saudis' project project's turbulent journey from an audacious concept to a sprawling operation that has faltered in its execution. Yeah. Defying skeptics, Saudi Arabia is barreling ahead with hundreds of billions of dollars in projects at Neom, sure. a built-from-scratch region that is the size of Massachusetts, typified wow. by sci-fi architecture, an arid ski resort, a laundry list of flashy projects meant to attract a population larger than New York City's. Yeah. None is more brazen than the multi-trillion dollar pair of skyscrapers taller than the Empire State Building Whoa. designed to run 105 miles long and house 9 million people. The flagship... What? That's what it looks like. The line. They call it Jesus the line. Jesus Christ. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's hideous. <laughs> it's called the line. This is... Google it so you can take a look at it. Saudi Arabia is the line. <clears throat> it's a uh, yeah. So the whole so thing is like it's, a fucking hellscape. The 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 well, it's so it's like it's two walls basically yeah. that are buildings which would have commercial spaces, apartments, apartments, all that stuff in them. Yeah. There's 600 feet between them where there'll be like trees and like parks yeah, and sure. stuff and all kinds of like right. bridges to the other side. Yeah, and. I don't know, whatever, flying cars, who knows what the fuck. Yeah. And so, but then there'd be high-speed rail to get you down to one end of it to the other and back. Wow. And it's a whole city that's only, you know, 700 feet wide, but it's 300 or 200 100 miles long. Um, <clears throat> it's champion, the champion of the project, the line, is Saudi crown prince and de facto ruler Mohammed bin, bin Salman. Salman has likened the project to Egypt's Great Pyramids. The kingdom in recent months downsized the line's first phase, facing reality of costs at a time the country is spending way more than it is taking in. Now organizers plan initially to build around 1.5 miles of the structure by 2030 rather than the 10-mile first chunk that had been previously envisioned. Yeah, quite a drop. Quite a drop. So it's going to be a mile long instead of a mile. Sure. So... The stakes for Saudi Arabia are as outsized as Muhammad's ambition. Niam is the ultimate symbol of his plans to transform the kingdom's economy, reduce its dependence on oil revenue, yeah. and make it a magnet for money and talent from around the world. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that might, we may get into this, but they, they, the WWE has a... Uh, WWE, yeah, yeah. Big partners over there. Big deal over there. They don't get into it, but that's what they want to do. <clears throat> They want to get away from these oil barons and more yeah. towards like entertainment and industry. Sure. Now, does it mention the Dragon Ball Z world? No. But they're they're, they're sure building that's... a Dragon Ball Z world well, that in I Saudi like. Arabia. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I hear one of the Dragon Balls the crown prince has himself. <laughs> He's hoarding it away. <clears throat> A mountain of challenges lies ahead. More than 100,000 additional construction workers must be housed in a barren corner of the kingdom's vast desert, 200, or sorry, two-hour drive from any sizable city. Neom's needs for steel, exterior glass, and other materials are so massive, they may push up global prices and be difficult to wow. source. Planners worry the unique central concept of the line, a vertical city housed in twin skyscrapers the length of Delaware, could prove to be an unappealing place to live. Yeah, yeah I don't think it, it doesn't look like fun. It doesn't seem cool. Now, some of the renderings of the inside look cool from like a sci-fi perspective, yeah. but not a place I would actually want to live. No, no. It looks... It's, <clears throat> yeah. At the, at the same time, the scaled-back plans for the line put a spotlight on Neom's enormous bill for what is now poised to be a mid-sized city. Neom executes now expect fewer than 200,000 residents in the <laughs> project's first phase, the population of Knoxville. <laughs> well, we're going to settle from Knoxville. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, no, it doesn't look like a fun place to live. Maybe a fun place to visit. Maybe you can take a, tri- a day trip over there while, after you go see Piccolo. <laughs> Yeah, at WWE, it World, looks like a cool place to, to, to visit. I suppose I don't really understand yeah, why it needs to be really a, a line there, or yeah. that long. We'll get into that. Yeah. Well, the price tag keeps rising. The projected cost of the ski resort in the region's arid mountains has more than doubled to thirty-eight billion dollars. Real estate advisory Jack Frank estimates more than two hundred thirty-seven billion for the construction contracts that have already been commissioned at Neom. 
Even for one of the world's most largest exporters of crude oil, Neom might be too expensive. Its official cost estimate is $500 billion, 50% more than the country's entire federal budget for the year, mm. and more than half the value of its sovereign wealth. Jeez. Sounds like it may have bit off more than they, they could chew. That's right. Nom, 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 <laughs> nom. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Neom's the centerpiece, as they say, of Muhammad's. Uh, I, 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 his identity and vision began in 2015 when his father ascended to the throne. Then 29 years old, the, the son of King Solomon outmaneuvered political heirs and rapidly consolidated power. And now he's trying to build his fucking great Giza pyramid. Yeah. The line. Well, honestly, he sounds, if I mean, if I met him, we would, we would, re- I feel like we would really hit it off. He loves WWE. He loves, he loves Dragon Ball Z. Z. Dude, he sounds like he rocks. He rocks. I, I love the idea that they're trying. I mean, I don't think this is a great idea. No. But I love the concept of trying to build build something like a wonder of the world. Yeah. Because no one ever does that anymore. No. Out here, you get the cheapest. They build up one of these apartments that look like dog the dick. Complete dog shit. No one's thought about architecture in a hundred years out here. <laughs> they do right. what's the You're cheapest thing right. possible. Yeah. I, th- I like the idea. Um, but this is, uh, I don't think it's going to work to right. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah, I mean, you got to respect this. Nobody, nobody thinks outside of the box. Nobody, so I'll skip nobody ahead. kills so, journalists so. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Great guy. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to go to a nightclub and talk about DBZ and maybe have him execute one of the, <laughs> somewhat annoying us at the nightclub. <clears throat> Uh, we'll skip to some of the challenges. Of mm. Architects have struggled to find the best ways to mix sunlight and open space in the interior. Yeah. Internal documents show they wrestled with how to differentiate neighborhoods so as not to create a monolithic block. Oh, opt- well, that's, yeah. That. Yeah, because everything could just look the same. Yeah, that to, would be to build. And then what happens if part of it's like the slums? You know what I mean? Like, how do you, every right. city's got a slum. Sure. So, but that's weird when it's not. It's, it's all, it's all in a line. line. You gotta go through it, like right. <laughs> right. You can't really go around yeah. it. Um, they worried about drab living conditions at the base of the interior. So if you're living at the bottom, I mean, you oh. really because most people are gonna have bridges and, and, oh. and, and shit up oh, at the top. I, yeah. And and so if you're like towards the top of it, it's like pretty sick. And right. You got this whole but, like forest. Beneath. Yeah. But From then the you, bottom. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, if you live at the top, but then you have to go down. With the slum, slum it with the, the losers to, the to go so, out. Yeah. They're worried about all that. Yeah. There's also a bird hazard. A bird hazard? You'll see, because the outside, much like the original pyramids of Giza, are going to be completely reflective. Because no. the original pyramids were covered in gold and it was bright, white, reflective. Yeah. So the outside of these are going to be mirrors. Oh. So what do you think that means? The, the, the a wall the, right as there. tall as the Empire State Building going 100 miles <laughs> This ref- completely reflective of the sky and the ground. Oh, oh my God. The, <laughs> the death toll for birds, they think, will be incalculable. Wow. <laughs> birds are going to be smacking into this thing left yeah. and right. It is inevitable that a significant number of birds will perish. Wow. It could be a genocide. <laughs> Absolutely. It'll be a bird genocide. Now, is so big, it has its own large scale construction project simply to prepare for the bigger projects. A port is needed to be built to receive materials and the is spending more than five billion dollars to build housing for construction workers mm. um, engineers and administrative workers live in a handful of of communities that they built with schools basketball courts a burger king a starbucks and a hampton inn where the rooms run about four hundred dollars mm. the first such camp already needs to be partially demolished after a design change the line is now due to run right through the community <laughs> housing the people that are trying to build it jesus christ it's to demonstrate progress to the crown prince engineers started putting in the foundation for the line a couple of years ago even before architects had figured out what was going to go above it Mm. architects soon decided the first phase should be built somewhere else leaving the line's initial foundations abandoned for now another question is its height numerous executives working at neom have questioned the need for a 1600 foot tall building which carries extra engineering challenges higher costs and makes evacuation very difficult yeah (laughs) So, renowned British uh, architect Peter Cook, who was involved in the line, called the project's height a bit stupid and unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> this guy building it, according yeah. to comments it published. May, yeah, <clears throat> it may look better in Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want to do the same thing, but just <laughs> take it up on its on its side. Um, Cook, who is overall praiseful of the project, called the line puzzling, even to those who are involved to designing it. Wow. Yeah. Will they pull it off? Well, we'll only find time out. will tell. We'll find out in a, I'd hate, a few years. Hate to get stuck in the line. That would be yeah. It could be the last habitable merch. place on Earth. 
It might be. The one thing that they didn't get into, which is kind of cool, is the entire building based on like it's it will be a completely energy self sufficient. Oh, so the whole city. Oh, really? It'd be like if New York was like self sufficient. Really? It would power itself. Uh, now, how is it with the nuclear fallout? I think you you want to be in the line. <laughs> Basically, if there's yeah. a nuclear follow, you, you want to get to the line as fast as possible. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, I would head straight to the I'll line. I'll be taking the first boat to Saudi Arabia, please. <laughs> in fact, if you can go right to the Red Sea, <laughs> it's pretty, I believe the line picks up right at the Red Sea. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be my concern, the nuclear fallout. How, how does it deal in nuclear fallout? Um, but yeah, or what if it catches on fire? Have they thought of that? Well, it's made of metal. So it's made of metal. Therefore, impossible. <laughs> sure, sure. It's yeah. baking in the 400 degree sun. Out it's in the middle of the desert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not. You would hate to put your hand on it. No. Oh, on the outside? <laughs> yeah. It would probably start on fire. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't thought about that either. No. What about the metals baking to 100 degrees? Yeah. So many wow. things to think about. Kit, bird killer hand burner. They also got it. I didn't talk about how cities for millennia have just been naturally center out. Mm hmm. And so they don't know if we're psychologically capable of. <laughs> we, can't just, like, we can't wrap our heads like, around. Like, I think we'll, we'll be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll just be like, ah. And Honestly, like, we'll a, I mean, ju just saying it, I was kind of doing that. Yeah, it makes you claustrophobic, Ugh. right? You're smushed between two walls yeah. for a, an endless strip. Uh, yeah, it sounds like hell on earth. Hell incarnate. No, yeah, it does. But, but it might be the only place left on earth. Yeah. Well,. No, I mean, it, uh, we're rooting for the Saudis. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friends for the show, I welcome anytime. time. I think we all are. <laughs> I think we I all speak are. for everyone who's listening to the body. Yes, we're rooting for the Saudis. Yeah. So yeah, good luck so. to them, and I can't wait to check out the, the line. <laughs> huh? We'll be going there. We'll be doing uh, our first live episode from the line in 20, 2030. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's it. I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Wraps it up. Echo Chamber with Joe and Trent. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, tell rate, your review, friends. tell leave your friends. Leave a comment. Yeah, leave a comment. We like hearing the comments. Somebody, oh, we love the comments. There wasn't a comments last week. It made us sad. <laughs> yeah, Joe was inconsolable. Of sad, was inconsolable. Yeah. Leave a comment. Tell us you like our cocks or whatever that one guy said. Yeah. And, tell uh, us what pants to wear. Tell us which pants to wear. And thank you guys as always. As always, this is Joe signing out. Oh, and this is Trent signing off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.